If you have worked with .NET Core and you are confused on whether you should use Transient, Scoped or Singleton, you are on the right video. My name is Brookin and welcome to .NET Mastery. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel, that way you are aware of all the new content that will be posted. Also, if you find the content helpful, make sure to like the video and leave a comment. In this short video, we will see the different service lifetimes when it comes to dependency injection in .NET Core. Before we take a look at any example, let me quickly give you a rough idea on what each lifetime is responsible for. Transient lifetime is the simplest one among all of them, and it is also one of the safest one. Transient basically means that whenever we want any implementation, create a new object and give that new object. You never have to reuse an existing object. Every time a service is requested, a new implementation is created. After that, we have the scoped, where it depends on the HTTP request. So whenever an HTTP request is sent to the server, that time for that scope, one lifetime will be created and then the same object or same service is used wherever in that request the service is requested. So let's say for one single page load we are calling a service 10 times, it will only create that object one time and it will use that same object 10 times in that one request. But then if a next request comes in, then a new implementation is created. And finally, we have Singleton, where one implementation is created for the lifetime of the application. So once the application starts, we create an object of that service or an implementation, and that is used for all the upcoming requests unless you restart the application. So to give you a rough idea again, transient, new service is created every single time. For scoped, new service will be created once per request and for singleton, new service will be created once per application lifetime. Now scoped is one of the most recommended approach for web application. Because of that, a service will be created on each request. But even with all of these overview, things might be a little complicated. So let me explain that little more with a real world example. Let me switch to Visual Studio and we will be creating an MVC application. I will give it a name of DI Service Lifetime and let me create that. In the project here, let me create a new folder for services. In there, let me create three interface or the three service that we have. So the first one will be I scoped. Let me add a new one here. That will be singleton. And finally, we will be adding the transient. These are just the interface name. We have not added any functionality. In there, let me add a method get grid which will return a random grid, so the return type will be string. Perfect, I will add that in all the three interface that we added. Now we need to add implementation of these three interface. Implementation will be pretty simple. Let me add a class here for the singleton grid service that will implement the i singleton grid service implement the interface here let me create a private read only grid with the name of id and in the constructor id we will say grid dot new grid in the function here we just want to return id dot to string that looks good let me create the same implementation for the other two interface that we have, let me add a class which will be scoped grid service and that will implement the i scoped grid service. 
I can copy everything here, paste it, and we will change the constructor name. Looks good. Let me add the last one, which is transient quit service. Let me copy and paste it in here. And this will implement the I transient quit service. So now we have three interface and their corresponding three implementation. That looks good. But when we register the services to program.cs, we have to write the life cycle to which we want to register. So in the add service here, we will say builder.services.add and then we have to write what life cycle we want to use. We have scoped, transient and singleton. In singleton, we will have the interface which is i singleton quid service and implementation is inside the singleton quid service. That is how we register a service to the dependency injection container. We will also register the transient and scoped service. Perfect. So it is exactly same like if we were registering DB context to the container and then when we have to use that, we will do that inside the home controller. Before we start using that, right here, let me create six private fields. Two will be for the scoped service, two for singleton and two for transient. We have scoped one two, singleton one two and transient one two. Next, what we want is implementation of this interface. We registered that in program.cs right here. So basically, we are saying that when someone asks for an implementation of I singleton grid service, we are telling the .NET framework that provide them the implementation that is there in the singleton grid service. But there we are telling that use the add singleton that is the lifetime. So when we want to use the implementation inside the constructor here, we can directly ask .NET Core that we need the implementation of I scoped grid service and we will call that as scoped grid. Then we want another implementation of that. So scoped grid 1, comma, we will have scoped grid 2. And similarly, we want the implementation for singleton and transient service. So these are the implementation that .NET Framework will provide based on what we registered in program.cs. Then we have to assign these implementation to the local variable that we have right here. For that we will say underscore singleton1 is equal to singleton1 and same for everything else. I can change this to be scoped1 rather than scoped grid here. Perfect. Looks good. So we have this implementation. On there we can call the method which is get quid. Rather than making anything fancy, let me use a string builder for messages here and I will append to that message using string interpolation. So first I will say transient1 and then we will display the value using underscore transient one dot get quid we have that method and after that let me add a new line so perfect that looks good for the first transient copy and paste that once again we want to display the transient two dot get quid and let me add one more new line there copy these paste it two more times Next, we want the scoped one, scoped one, scoped two, underscore scoped one, underscore scoped two, and finally, we need singleton. Perfect. When we return back, we do not want to return back to a view. We just want to return OK and display the message dot to string on the screen. So now we need to think about what will happen. All of them have basically the same get quid method which returns a random quid. But the only thing that is different is on how the lifecycle have been registered. So let me run this 
and see that in action. And perfect, we have something right here. You can see when we are working with the transient request here, the quids are different. But when we have scoped or singleton, they are the same. As we know, singleton stays same for the life cycle of the application. So even when we refresh the application, scope and transient will be different, but singleton will always stay the same. You can see when I am refreshing here, transient is getting updated along with scoped, but singleton always stays the same. And then for scoped here, you can see every time for a single request, it gets a new value, but for one request, the value stays the same in both of them. But in transient, for any time a quid is requested, it calls a new quid. So that means every time when a transient is called, it basically gives a new implementation of that service. When it comes to scoped, the implementation stays same for one request. If in that one request we are calling this 10 times, we will get the same service. But for the next time, it will get you a different service when you are working with scoped. So with that, you can see how transient, scoped and singleton are different when it comes to dependency injection service lifetime. I hope you have enjoyed this short video and for more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you guys in some other video.